sorry that we're running a little bit late this morning. We had some important discussions we had to have before we could get back out. Uh, Mr. Curley, you have the implication this morning? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my pleasure to ask Mr. Uh, Larry Pierce, Sheriff Larry Pierce, to come forward and to have our invocation. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, again, we come to you and say thank you for allowing us to come and conduct the business of the county. And we just pray for wisdom upon each and every one this morning that will be introducing business and to just spread your wisdom upon each and every department head as we conduct business in our county. We pray, Lord, for the safety of our first responders this morning and throughout this week. We pray for the family that all lost their loved one in Scotland County, a deputy that gave his life in the line of duty that will be buried tomorrow. We just pray for that family in the Scotland County Sheriff's Office. We ask that you look over this today, that you bless this meeting, and all things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we say the pledge, let's remember all of our men and women that have sacrificed so much for this flag in the past and remember our men and women that are in uniform today that are making the same sacrifices. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Eckhart. Has everybody had the opportunity to review the minutes? Are there any corrections? Move to approval. I've got a motion on the floor to approve. Any additional discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Mr. Honeycutt, uh, just for another agenda. Uh, yes, sir. We do have a couple of things we do need to move around. Uh, first, uh, before public comments, we would like to add uh, Judge Erica James. Uh, who's going to talk about the Wayne County Partnership Agreement Community Teams with Schools. So she'll make that presentation uh, before public comments. And also, if we could move uh, number one under new business uh, to consent uh, as the Mount Olive contingency was here and made their presentation during the uh, agenda discussion. Okay, thank you. Is there any additional adjustments, Chairman? I mean, excuse me, Commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. We've got a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to ask um, Judge James if you'll come on up, because I know you need to get back to work, too. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. And good morning to good morning, the buddy. commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you this morning. And thank you to Ms. Bowden, uh, Ms. Parker, for having me add it to the agenda. I do appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to talk with you about our school justice partnership, which is the Wayne Pax agreement that I believe Ms. Bowden provided a copy of um, to you. This is essentially our version of the school justice partnership. Our Pax agreement, the partnership agreement for community teams with schools, recognizes that we in the community share responsibility for school safety and that we have to work together to achieve a safe learning environment for everyone. That includes the school administrators, the teachers, as well as the students. So this document expresses the agreement of the parties for responding to non-emergency school disruptions. And let me say two things about that. First, it is a an agreement, a partnership agreement, and we are certainly hoping that our county commissioners will be partners to this agreement and we're going to be asking for the chairman of the board to sign on to this agreement as one of those partners. The other point that I want to make to you is that this agreement addresses non-emergency school disruptions. We are not talking about the shooter on campus. We are talking about um, adolescent misconduct that too often gets referred into the court system. We want those issues to be handled at the school where, quite frankly, they've traditionally been handled in the first place. So um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about our Wayne Pax agreement, how this thing came about, and why I'd like to have your support to this agreement. I will tell you that in September 2015, our Chief Justice, Mark Martin, Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, convened the North Carolina Commission on the Administration of Law and Justice and in that commission, he requested a comprehensive independent review of the North Carolina judicial system 
as well as recommendations for improve, improving our administration of justice. So there were several committees, and one of the committees looked at the criminal justice um, perspective specifically, and they looked at juvenile justice. And that committee recommended that North Carolina raise the age <clears throat> of juvenile court jurisdiction to include 17, um, 16 and 17 year olds. So raise the age to 18. Now, as you know, that has happened. Um, the juvenile age refers to the cutoff age for kids who are treated in the adult court system versus the juvenile court system. Right now, 16 and 17 year olds are treated in the adult court system. The Raise the Age legislation takes care of that. Those kids are gonna be placed back into the juvenile court system. But the Raise the Age has been implemented in stages. 16 and 17 year olds will, know, will not be treated in our juvenile courts until December 1st, 2019. So in the meantime, this agreement is gonna um, help to deal with some of those issues. You all also may be aware that our juvenile courts were created in 1919. That's when we created juvenile court jurisdiction. It ain't been changed since then. That's a hundred years, a hundred years. And so um, I think, um, and not just my humble opinion, but the opinion, quite frankly, across the entire country, is that it was time to change that. And North Carolina was one of the last states, in fact, the last day, because I believe New, New York beat us out, um, the last date to raise the age of juvenile court jurisdiction. The Chief Justice's Commission found a number of things with respect to raising the age. Number one, they found that the majority of 16 and 17 year olds commit misdemeanor offenses and nonviolent felony offenses. Most of those are misdemeanors. Of those who commit felonies, they're nonviolent. But the majority of offenses committed by 16 to 17 year olds, they're all misdemeanors. Um, the commission also found that raising the age would make North Carolina safer because our statistics tell us that when you rehabilitate kids, that the recidivism rate drastically decreases much more than in the adult court system. Um, the commission also found that raising the age has been successfully implemented in other states, and that's in, <clears throat> in fact true. The commission found that it's supported by scientific research. So um, our social scientists and our neuroscientists tell us that the brain doesn't fully develop until about 23 or 24, some say even 25. Uh, and so it's supported by the science. Uh, the commission also found that raising the age would remove a com competitive disadvantage to our citizens in North Carolina. So if a kid here in North Carolina goes down to the Belks and steals a t-shirt, he's gonna uh, be prosecuted and have a permanent criminal record. That same kid could have done that same act in South Carolina and it's part of his confidential juvenile record protected from disclosure. Um, so in addition to raising the age, the committee recommended that full funding be implemented to support raise the age because remember raise the age is something that had it's not a new concept. It's been um, talked about or presented at least twice that I know of, and in each of those occasions it failed for a number of reasons, not the least of which was lack of funding to support it. But um, one of the other things the committee recommended was to ameliorate or to reduce the cost of implementing it that North Carolina expand statewide existing programs to reduce the number of school-based referrals coming into the juvenile court system. So this is where our Wayne Pax agreement comes in. School-based complaints account for almost half of the referrals to the juvenile court system, a phenomenon thought to be part of the school to justice, or school to prison rather, school to prison pipeline. Um, where kids are punished for conduct that is relatively minor, happens in school, generation ago the schools would have handled it but today we're sending those kids to criminal court uh, and so responding to those concerns folks have come up with plans to deal with that and our programs here in north carolina are based off of a um, juvenile court judge out of georgia um, stephen teskey sort of pioneered this effort of the school to justice partnerships and so he implemented this program in his district and basically what it says is no kid can have a criminal complaint filed against them until they've committed at least three um, delinquent acts within the same school year. And so our program is modeled off of that. Now what they found is that it actually works. They went back and looked at the evidence to um, um, 
after the program was implemented, and Judge Teske's program reported an 83% reduction in school referrals to the juvenile justice system, and importantly, a 24% increase in graduation rates. So we learned that we can keep our kids in school, we can get our graduation rates to go up. So we started looking at this issue probably around 2015, 2016, here in our district. So I'd be sitting on the bench, and I'd see these kids come in front of me, and they're charged with simple affray, simple assault, because they've gotten into a fight in school, perhaps disorderly conduct because they yelled and cursed the teacher in the hallway. These are serious crimes in the adult court system. They're class two misdemeanors. They carry up to 60 days in jail. 60 days in jail for fighting in school. I dare say that my fine commissioner sitting here probably got into at least one fight when you were in high school, but you did not get criminally penalized for it. That's what's happening today. So nonetheless, I'm in court. By the time these kids come to me, it's about 60 to 90 days after the fight. So think about that. If your kid gets into trouble, are you going to make an appointment to punish them 60 to 90 days later? No, you're going to deal with it right then. But referring these matters to the court doesn't allow us to do that. And so by the time the kid's standing in front of me, I'm saying, so what's your relationship with little Johnny now? Oh, Judge, we're cool. And I'm thinking, why is this kid in front of me? Why isn't he in school? Because there's really no criminality to punish at this point. Remember, our scientists have told us that kids are being kids. Their brains are wired to be that way. Uh, so nonetheless, we convened a small group here in our district. You know that our judicial district includes Wayne, Green, and Lenore counties. So myself, um, one of my colleagues on the bench, Judge Heath, we um, started meeting. We got a few stakeholders together, uh, and we talked about what we could do to keep this from happening in Wayne County, in Lenore County, and in Green County. Uh, we met with our juvenile court counselor, our chief juvenile court counselor. We met with a couple of school board members. Eventually, our meetings grew, our stakeholder group grew, and um, we brought in Jay Corpening, who is a judge out of New Hanover County, who implemented one of the first programs in our state, and he came in and facilitated our agreements. Now, our stakeholder meetings included pretty much everybody that you could imagine which touch, which, um, would touch a kid's life from the time they get to the schoolhouse to the courthouse. Our high sheriff, um, Larry Pierce, was part of those meetings. Um, our chief of police, Mike West, the superintendent, our juvenile court counselors, our school resource officers, principals, um, our local management entity, folks from in, um, East Point, because we understand that a lot of these kids get into issues because of mental health problems, and so we wanted to bring that piece in as well. And so we had these meetings, and we decided to come up with this agreement, which is what you have before you. And I will tell you that in a nutshell, the agreement requires that minor student misconduct be handled at the school rather than referring it to court. And like the other programs that I've talked about, no criminal charges will be pursued by the SRO or the school unless the student has committed at least two prior focus acts. And if you look at that agreement, those focus acts are your delinquent acts, and they're defined on page 8. And then there's a list of those acts um, starting at page 13 going into page 14. In addition to this procedure, we want to give the school some additional resources to deal with this delinquent behavior or this behavior. And so one of the things we've done in this agreement is said school resource officers can now do direct referrals to our teen court program. That did not happen previously. What had to happen is the charge was made officially, the case was sent to adult court, the adult court judge would decide whether to refer the case to teen court, the kid would complete teen court, come back to adult court, and get a dismissal if they successfully completed the program. We've eliminated that. So now our SROs can make direct referrals to the teen court. Um, <clears throat> Our local JCPC, um, many of you know Sudie Davis, our director of that JCPC. She was, we just had a meeting and she's telling me about how she's fussing at this employer in Virginia because we had a kid in our teen court program who successfully completed the program, moved to Virginia, and the employer refused to hire her even though she had gotten the dismissal that she was supposed to get. 
this program will eliminate that because once you get a criminal charge and a file number is generated, it becomes part of the record. So we won't have file numbers generated anymore because school resource officers will be able to do that direct referral. One of the other programs we're looking at is a peer mediation program. Our JCPC has just approved funding for our community supporting schools team to pick that up so that we can help kids resolve their conflicts before it even gets to a fight, quite frankly. This is the idea. That's a program that's being championed out of Campbell um, Law School. It's got good evidence-based results that say it works. And so this, these are the things that we're trying to do. I am not asking you to sign on to this today. I wanted to give you a heads up and give you an opportunity to ask questions, quite frankly, if you have any, because on April the 12th, we are going to be having representatives from um, the state office, Department of Public Safety, juvenile justice come down and present a raise the age workshop to the county commissioners as well as other stakeholders in our community. That raise the age workshop is going to give you um, more information than you probably want to know about the logistical changes that will be required of the county in order to implement raise the age. Um, the additional resources that are going to be needed, additional space that's going to be needed, those sorts of things. All of that is going to be discussed at that workshop. But at that workshop, we're also going to be having what I'd like to say is a signing ceremony for our Wayne Pax agreement. And I hope that we will have your signature, Mr. Chairman, as a part of that agreement on April 12th at that meeting. Thank you. Any questions? questions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I, I haven't read. I haven't read all this. I've been looking through it. Does this does this address um, the the teachers um, part of of classroom discipline? In other words, I, I know teachers here in Wayne County and also Johnson County that tell me on on a very often basis that they are called uh, four-letter words out loud in their classrooms almost every day. And when, they, when they're when reported, nothing takes place. Uh, does this address that in at all? Or, and or are we passing the discipline that the teachers should have? Are we passing it over to the SRO officers and everyone else? Are we passing the bug? Because my take is, is that classroom discipline is not there the way it should be by the teacher. And these teachers have concerns. For example, they are concerned about the students' retaliation toward them. They are concerned about community retaliation for whatever reason. So in a lot of cases, teachers are hesitant to even report some of these cases. So I'm just asking a question, does this address the, the teacher's part of this one? Um, it does address the teacher's part of uh, discipline. Um, Mr. Mayo, if you will, um, and I'm sorry, I can't point to the direct section, but if you look at section 3.08, page 17, it addresses the role of school <coughs> administration and teachers. And so this agreement is going to specifically define the SRO's role. It's going to define the graduated response model that the school is to implement when they respond to discipline. And when I say graduated response, um, it is essentially something that is handled in the classroom first if it's a situation that could be handled by the teacher. If it gets to the point where the teacher cannot handle it, there is a sex, uh, subsequent step that the teacher should take involving a school-based team of um, various administrators within the school to try to address a problem with the um, child. From that point, they would bring in the principal, if need be, and perhaps um, um, other administrators. After those remedies are exhausted, if that does not address the problem, the final resort is to bring in the school resource officer. And the school resource officer will have those additional tools at his dis or her disposal <coughs> to address those issues. But certainly, if a um, child is cursing the teacher um, in the classroom, um, we don't want that to happen. But we um, are asking, and this agreement forces us to ask, 
is this behavior that we want to criminalize? And if the answer to that question is no, then we need an alternative program to deal with that. And that's what this agreement um, purports to do. And I can tell you that our superintendent and our school teachers and principals here in Wayne County, the ones that I have met with, and we've met several times, they are on board with this. Um, and we've gotten um, tremendous support from our superintendent, and um, I've met with the principals separately. Uh, some of them have been a part of our focus groups, our stakeholder meetings, um, and we have great support um, for this agreement, and um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. You. I uh, hesitate to tread here. Uh, <laughs> I applaud what you're attempting to do. I think it's, we need to keep as, as best we can kids out of the courts. And I agree with you. My concerns though are, are we basically going to give the problem makers in our schools two free passes every year before there's any consequences? In other words, I'm hoping that we are, in fact, going to have some consequences for bad actions so that we don't have the disruption in our, in our classrooms. Um, and I'm hoping that's addressed in here. I haven't reviewed this, just got it. Uh, I applaud it because there needs to be some other way other than going through the court system. Um, but there has to be some type of uh, fear of loss for lack of a better word and term, uh, for students to recognize they are responsible for their actions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Absolutely, and that is addressed in the agreement. And I can tell you that that's been a concern of everyone who's looked at this agreement and who's been a part of this. And so we wanted to be sure that the schools understood, first of all, that nothing in this agreement says you cannot punish bad behavior because you certainly should. It's just that that punishment does not necessarily mean criminal charges and sending them to court. And so all of the other tools that have always been available to schools will continue to be available to schools. Um, 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 uh, suspensions, um, uh, after school detention, taking away of privileges, things of that nature. Those things, um, and parent-teacher conferences, those are things that are always available to the schools. And the other piece to this is, remember, the agreement is for non-emergency situations. If there is a child who is continuously disruptive, and this is known to the school, and this, um, um, this child's behavior goes above and beyond what's, what this agreement is intended to address, then they're directed to act the same as they would in any other circumstance. Because some kids need to have cases filed through the criminal court, but the vast majority of them do not. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. And my follow-up is kind of um, what he was saying, because I'm looking at page 14 and there, you know, what the list of offenses that might be there. I guess if the level of communicating threats, you have to make a decision whether that's one of the passes or not. I would assume that's the way you're looking at that, because it could be I'm going to come shoot the place up, and you know you got to do something then. And I guess y'all have talked about that at length, and then you know possession of marijuana and that type of thing. That, that concerns me just a little bit, but I need to, I need to read the whole document before I pass judgment on that. Yes, sir. I understand. And absolutely. The thing, too, about this agreement is that it gives our school resource officers a much deal of um, a greater discretion in terms of how to handle these things. Because many times a school resource officer um, knows what's going on mm -hmm. on that campus. And so um, the school resource officer, along with the administrators, know the difference between I'm going to kick your tail and I'm going to shoot up the whole yeah. school. Quite frankly, those are going to be things that are going to be dealt with differently um, and for obvious reasons. Well, I would hope so. Absolutely. Any other comments? Thank you, Judge. And we'll, be, we'll look at this very closely and um, we'll be talking to you. Thank you. Thank April 12th. All right. Okay, I know we're well past our 905. Public comments, but the public comment section is open. You'll come up and give me your name, your address, and your phone number.
that four minutes. Shirley Edwards, 1766 Tommy's Road, and I am here in support of what Judge James said, but moreover to talk about why we have these problems. We live in a society where people can say what they want. It's called freedom of speech. It's ugly. The TV uses the ugly words. So we live in a society that the adults are teaching children that it's okay. And part of the problems that we're having in the school, years ago, we had juvenile programs in this county. I worked full time and ran one of them, Crossroads to Understanding. We had a lot of programs where we dealt with these same kind of problems that are not being dealt with. Wayne County is complicit in these problems. Our leadership and our citizens, all of us are complicit in these problems. It takes a village to raise a child. And these children in Wayne County do not have the village. We all have to do more to be sure that we have programs and services to meet the needs. I don't know if you've seen the poverty report that talks about poverty in Wayne County and the city of Goldsboro, and poverty has its own set of problems. You know, the parents of these children, many of them go into the prison system and come back out with no jobs, nowhere to stay, they can't stay in public housing. And they see this. Children learn what they live. We have many problems, and the leadership and the citizens the two, all the governmental bodies from Pike for Fremont, all of us, we need to come together and address these problems. Show these children our leadership because it's not enough for us to sit in rooms and talk. It is necessary that we do action to show the children that we care about the problems that are going on because we can do a lot better. We can bring back programs and services to this county to address these kinds of problems. Filling the jails is not the solution. Blaming the children is not the solution. We need all to help better raise these children. There are many people, are parenting children, that have no business parenting, being parents. But biology does not make parents. So I'm saying to us as a county, we must take a greater responsibility. I'm willing to do my part, and I'm calling on y'all to do your part too. Thank you. Anyone else? Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner members. My name is Diana Hammond. I come to you today as a representative of St. Francis Episcopal Church and St. Andrews and Teen Impacts of Goldsboro. Um, it's amazing that what I'm here to t uh, talk to you about today fits right in with uh, what has been said so far this morning. Our group it was formed to bring to Goldsboro and the surrounding area a program uh, this program is uh, scheduled for April 7th at the Goldsboro Event Center um, at 2 o'clock p.m. The story that we're bringing is about a hate crime survivor by the name of Race Buyan. Mr. Buyan was an immigrant to this country with hopes of becoming an American citizen and continuing his education. He was working at a convenience store in Texas like so many young people do when they immigrate here. And 10 days after 9-11, a man came into the store, raised his shotgun, and shot him in the face and left him for dead. This man had also killed two other young men earlier. Um, he did kill them, and he left them with families, young families, with no support. Mr. Buyan did not die, however. Um, the story is about survival compassion, forgiveness, and ultimately Mr. Buyan ended up actually trying to get the death sentence of this man by the name of Mark Stroman commuted to life. Through this journey, he was asked by the man who shot him in the face and left him for dead before he was executed, he asked him, please go on with your work. If I had opportunities when I was a child, Perhaps I wouldn't have ended up here. Mr. Buyan, out of all this tragedy and sorrow and survived, not only survived, he triumphed. He created an organization called World Without Hate. World Without Hate offers several 
youth programs that can uh, easily coincide with the programs here in Wayne County, like the great program with the Goldsboro Police Department, Impact Teens Goldsboro, and provide them with additional tools and resources to expand their programs and to help the youth in our community and in our county and possibly in our state. The program that we're presenting on April 7th tells about his journey, um, learning to forgive, to have compassion, and to turn that into something positive that can possibly influence our young to go a different direction. As you know, most youth are influenced by adults, by gangs, by other organizations, which allow them to have structure, which allow them to have acceptance, and re to be respected. Um, I understand the gang uh, activity in uh, Wayne County is pretty active from speaking with the Goldsboro Police Department. This program, along with others that already exist, again, can uh, expand our resources to these organizations and, and bring uh, some additional tools for us to address this very issue. Um, I know I, I'm out of time, but uh, I would ask that uh, the county support this initiative uh, to attend our program on April 7th. It's a fascinating story. And um, to look at the programs that World Without Hate can offer us here through our own community organizations. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Ms. Barnes? Good morning. I am, my name is Sylvia Barnes, and I live at 1708 Laurel Street here in the city of Goldsboro. I, um, I sent you all, um, I think it was yesterday, an email. I'm not sure whether you all have received the email, so I chose to come and to tell you um, here this morning. Um, the Goldsboro Wayne branch of the NAACP is, uh, is trying to sponsor the AXO uh, technology, uh, which is a major part of the national NAACP. And I will just read you some of the letter that I sent uh, to you all through your email. For more than eight years, our branch have not competed or sponsored the, the AXO program. And that was because of a lack of the funds that it takes to put this program on. This is a very exciting competition and rewarding program for students in high school. AXO is a national program that students compete in every year during the NAACP National Convention and win top scholarships and national recognition. AXO, which stands for Afro-Academic Cultural, Technological, and Scientific Olympics, is a major project of the NAACP. Students are encouraged and inspired toward the excellence in academic and cultural pursuits while benefiting from the major supports of the, the communities in which they live. On April 6, 2018, 7 o'clock p.m., students enrolled in grades 9 through 12 can compete in the following competition, vocal music, musical instruments, drawing, painting, sculpture, dance, oratorial, art, mathematics, photograph, poetry, and in, math, in, in, in other forms of mathematics. One winner in each category will compete in the state competition, which will be held on April the 21st in Lawnburg, North Carolina. Our branch is hoping that we will get students throughout the, the county and all five of the, the high schools that will come and compete in this competition. Since the state competition will, will, will cover um, high school students from across the um, state of North Carolina, we are still hoping that we will have some winners from the Wayne County. 
the winners from the state competition will go on to compete in the national competition, which will be held in San Antonio, Texas, July the 12th, 13th, and 14th of uh, this year. Uh, we are not asking for any donation from the county because I come to quite a number of county commissioners and I hear the budget. And you are talking about money, so. But uh, we will ask that if you want to make a contribution to us at our local branch to help sponsor th these uh, students, whoever win, to be able to go to Lomberg, and then if we have winners from Lomberg, that they be able to go on to uh, San Antonio, Texas. The last student that we had to win in the state competition and travel to the national competition was Melvin DeVoe. Um, Mr. Um, Mel's uh, father is a retired um, Army um, man, and his mother is an elementary school teacher at uh, Spring Creek Elementary School. Um, Melvin did not win at the national level, but he met many um, people that was there from all over the world that are business people, musical people, artists, and and um, just a large variety of people. Melvin is now living in um, Las Vegas, and he is pursuing his career in voice and music. So we want, I wanted to make you aware and hope that you all will put on your, your schedules and your calendar that you can come and see these students <coughs> on April the 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Is there anyone else? I'm Barry Merrill. I live at 432 Club Knoll Road in Dudley. <coughs> My phone number is 919-922-1499. Uh, I'll be brief, <laughs> uncharacteristically. Um, I, I um, talked with several people who attended the Friday night event at the new Maxwell Center. And the first comment I heard was, it didn't look like Wayne County. It was, so, it was handled so well, so professionally, and the worst word was first class. And, and we're not used to that in Wayne County. So I, I, I appreciate all the effort. I know there were a lot of people in Wayne County that have gotten behind the Maxwell Center, and, and it, was, it was done very, very well and, and was a very positive reflection on the future of Wayne County, and, and, I, and I hope that we can do more things like that. Uh, I, I can't uh, not comment about Judge James's uh, presentation. Um, my experience in Wayne County and working with law enforcement and, and actually in the prison system as well is there are a lot of great people who go well beyond the job description because they care about the people that they work with and, and try to help them and, and come up with things. And, and clearly uh, she, she has a heart for, for working hopefully t uh, to turn young people's lives around. And, and I, I just uh, am excited to hear that, and I hope that y'all will be able to support that as best you can. Uh, third, a week ago, uh, Wayne County School Board members took an important vote uh, to, to make some changes uh, for Wayne County students that need it the most. Uh, in the five low-performing schools in this county, they voted to lower the class size, not in four years, but to go ahead and, and this coming year to lower the class size. And the other thing that they did, which was, which was important, was to, to say we need to make sure that we have um, uh, certified teachers in our low performing schools. Among all the schools in the county, when we have to bring in uh, lateral entry teachers to fill classrooms, and they're having to do that because of funding and a lot of other issues, uh, many of those teachers are ending up in our, in our five uh, elementary schools that are classified as low performing they're not they're not bringing kids up as high as they can and they that they're saying we need to get our better teachers in those particular schools uh, again it's going to take some money to do that and they're going to be asking the county commissioners I'm sure for some money it's not going to be a lot because they don't have to build uh, uh, classrooms in those schools because their their uh, parents are taking their kids out of those schools 
and that they want to improve the quality of education in Carver Elementary and in Brogdon Primary and Spring, Spring Creek Elementary, Carver Heights, I can't remember what the fifth one is, um, and th th to put resources where they need to be. So again, I, uh, I encourage you when, when budget time comes, Mr. County Manager and, and Commissioners, to tr try to help them as, as best you can. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Before you come up, I'm just going to say that the policy of the sport is to allow four minutes per meeting. I just wanted to give you the packages about the program. Okay, if you'll hand it off to the okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But you're certainly welcome to come back at any time. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We'll close it all out. It is now closed. Moving on to consent agenda. We talked about this at length in the earlier session. Is there any more discussion about that? Any question? If not, I entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. The motion on the floor. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay, moving to the donation of $2,010 charger from the Sheriff's Department to the Lincoln Community College. The Sheriff spoke about that in an earlier session, too. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion on the floor. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay, then the motion to sell the sale of surplus property, 807 Nile Street. We looked at that. Is there any more questions about that? Mr. Chairman, I move adoption of the sale of surplus. Uh, motion, surplus property. I got you. Motion on the floor to approve. <laughs> Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Move it on. And let's see here. Motion to approve the field of theater campaign. That's food donations to fill every seat in the Paramount. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, it's sponsored by the United Way. Oh, by the United Way. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. And a motion to approve the meeting with the Wayne County Chamber's Junior Leadership for Government and Law Day, Tuesday, April 10. Any discussion on that? Motion to approve, Mr. Yeah, motion to approve. No discussion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. And motion to approve the upgrade slash detailing of the seal of Wayne County. Any more discussion on that? Hey, just Mr. Mayo brought up a, a, a good question. Uh, the, the scales, why they were not balanced on the original? I mean, is there a reason? Nobody knows. People suspect, but nobody knows. Okay, I, I don't have a problem with change, but I just want to make sure we're not violating some general statute somewhere. Uh, okay. I think, I think right. it was just a common sense yeah. thing that took place at that yeah. time. As long as Mr. Parker's been around, he didn't know, so it must have been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> been like that for 100 years. <laughs> well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I might point out that on the seal of the courts here, the scale is balanced. So maybe we better balance it. <laughs> uh, yeah. okay. All right, is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Motion on the floor. Is there any additional discussion? All right, those in favor again, please raise your right hand. And we have a video that we need to see, and I'm not sure that public affairs offices put out another dynamite video. Yes, Jinxed it, Mr. Chairman. I gave too much praise. Yeah. I think the quality of life. I, mean, I think we have here. Probably. 
Yeah, I think we have technical difficulties. We are. We'll work on that and try to get something for next time. Okay. All right. All right. Then we'll go ahead and move on to the county manager's comments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, nothing much to comment on. However, it has, has been brought up about the Maxwell Center grand opening, and and just want to thank you and and this board for for their support of staff and 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 for the different things that we've tried to do. I want to thank James Wade and congratulate James and his staff for what they did. Um, as I said at the gala, it really was a a true team effort between. All departments in Wayne County everybody had a hand in making sure that number one the building got complete but number two the buildings running and, and running uh, smoothly and and I you know from the video that we had at the gala uh, again I think I mentioned that the finance department uh, helped do the uh, centerpieces for the gala so just everybody really had a hand in it and I think it uh, is something to be very very proud of and uh, I always like the comment the chairman made. It was a great day for Wayne County, uh, the opening of March 1. And, and uh, I think this board and past boards uh, really have a lot to be proud of. It took a lot of courage to do that type of building and to that quality. And, and I think it will pay off in the long run. So those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Dollar. I'm going to start off with me. <clears throat> I hate to disagree with Mr. Merrill here on some issues, but um, I, along with many others, was shocked and disappointed by the approval of the policy change by five members of the Wayne County Board last week. <clears throat> Upon the motion of Raymond Smith, five school board members supported two items which will cost Wayne County, Wayne County school system uh, local dollars as well as personnel. The first item was to reduce the class size in low performing elementary schools next year to the levels required in the 21-22 school year. Now that was required by recent legislation. There are three or more reasons why this motion is misguided and wrong for Wayne County Schools. The first reason is that after months, many months of opposition, the General Assembly has reached out and studied the timing of the, implement of the implementation of class size reduction. They consulted with the North Carolina School Board Association, the North Carolina County Commissioners Association, county commissioners individually, school board members, superintendents, teachers, parents, and others. And then after months of discussion, the General Assembly passed the legislation last month that we asked for, and that was to fund those additional teachers. Furthermore, the legislation phases in those requirements over several years. We all asked for more time and more money from the legislators, and they provided it. It is misguided and wrong to implement a program outside of that legislation. Now many legislators, legislators may conclude that we were misleading them over our financial needs by this action. Now the second thing that I want to point out comes the funding to implement that vote. The legislation clearly lays out state funding for these additional teachers. Any policy outside of this will have to be fully funded from local funds. I have been advised that the cost of implementing this recently voted policy will cost the county school system approximately $1.4 million. Now at that rate, the entire fund balance will be depleted before the state picks up the funding of those teachers. This is just wrong. The third point I, I want to point out of concern is the policy passed by five members that would require the superintendent to place certified teachers first in the five low-performing elementary school. Now this will require the moving of certified teachers from other schools in Wayne County. Now sometimes over the teachers' objections. Certified teachers are a premium, and we certainly do not need to risk losing any of them. 
This will greatly disrupt the student achievements in most of the other schools in Wayne County and may motivate some of our certified teachers to leave Wayne County. Now everyone wants to find a solution to improve loan performance schools. We all earn for that, but this is not the answer. The last issue I want to talk about is a comment made by school board member Raymond Smith. Specifically, the commissioners, quote, need to put their money where their mouth is. This was highly offensive. It was highly offensive to me as an individual to the entire board, and it threatens the positive relationship that we have worked years to develop. Mr. Smith, this board has put its money where its mouth is. We approved a commitment to better schools by approving the building of Grantham Middle School, Spring Creek Middle School, Meadow Lane Elementary School with Edgewood. We have improved, approved capital improvements at Charles B. Acock, Goldsboro High, Southern Wayne, Spring Creek Elementary, and many other schools. Recently, we approved adding eight classrooms to Meadow Lane Project at a cost to county budget of $1.4 million. Now, add it all up. Over the last five years, this board has put its money where its mouth is, over $90 million in school improvements. Mr. Smith, words are important. I respectfully ask the school board to vote to rescind these ill-fated policy at its next board meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cavardi. <laughs> you went past your four minutes. I did. I apologize. <laughs> I gave him part of mine. Uh, my comments, uh, first I would like to sort of address them in a hopefully a sequential manner. And I'd like to uh, start with uh, Mr. Merrill. I also agree with you that uh, the Maxwell Center is a sign of progress in Wayne County. It was well managed and well attended, but not by a great cross section of the population in Wayne County. And that we need to do something about. It was a great uh, uh, dressed up affair, black tie mostly. I, I didn't have a black tie and I did have a dark tie, but it wasn't black. But it represented what I understood to be the protocol for dress. Very nice. And I would like to also speak to the low performing school situation. Not to add on or take away from anything that's been said and not to make a comment about that at all. I want us to focus on low performing schools and the poverty report that was alluded to by Ms. Edwards. All kinds of things can take place and will take place, but we are going to have to reach deep inside of what's wrong in our, in our environment. The low performing schools are basically on what I call the 117 corridor that runs out of Mount Olive, up through Dudley, up through Goldsboro. And the poverty report, some of the most extreme situations for poverty exist on that corridor. We're not going to solve, I don't think, any situation that exists with low performing schools until we solve low wages. Low socioeconomic environments cause children not to have the opportunity to maximize their learning. I applaud my colleagues' numbers when it talks about Wayne County putting the money where the mouth is, and we have for brick and mortar. Maxwell Center is beautiful. I heard someone talk about the dollars that it costs to put it together. 
it, it, and they were correct, and it costs money. And the schools that we have voted to build, beautiful. But oftentimes, when we hear folk talk about the beautiful buildings, we oftentimes hear that from folk who have already insured their children's education. The, the, uh, oftentimes those parents already have iPads at home and laptops at home and widescreen TVs and can take their children on trips to the mountains and to the beaches. Until we do something about the people experience, we will continue to have low performance schools regardless of how many uh, new buildings we build and how many teachers we <laughs> think we need to move from one school to another one. I'm not sure exactly what anyone meant by the comments made, but uh, we will have to we will have to do something to encourage teachers to go to the schools where they are most needed. Can't drive them, might be able to lead them, but we can't drive them. But I'll, 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 I'll leave that where it is, but until the community rise up and do something about the poverty that exists where these children live, and go to school, we'll not solve the problem. Mr. Mayor. I, I have a, a question I'd like to ask Mr. Parker or, or Craig. Um, the, on, on the under underperforming schools, would a state, would the state education bond, if it passes, I know that it's being looked at, would that, would that provide any funding for brick and mortar? That's what I, my, my understanding is that's what they're looking at, and, and I don't think the, the bond has been passed yet or no, the details, but but that's what's being talked about in the General Assembly is for brick and mortar. Okay, so I'm, let's go for what if. if. If we as a county go ahead and and and, and provide funding uh, to for these five underperforming schools now, and don't wait for the legislature. If the state education bond passes, can we be reimbursed? Okay, that's my point. And, and well taken, Commissioner Daughtery, is that there's a schedule here that we need to look at to see not only can we uh, get the job done, it's what needs to be done, but also look at the funding part. So that was all my comments on that. Bit very busy two weeks. Uh, we had a joint meeting with the Board of Education, Board of Commissioners. I uh, attended a Workforce East <coughs> uh, meeting. Uh, we had a DSS meeting. Uh, I attended along with uh, Tammy Shrinker, our DSS director, and Kim McGuire of Child Services up in Edgecombe County. I attended the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Child Welfare Regional Meeting. Boy, what an eye-opener. And without going into very many details, just one thing that came out of that meeting. Every, every 10 seconds, a child is abused in the United States of America. Every 10 seconds. The second thing is, is that there was a lot of discussion, and we'll be hearing more about this, on House Bill 630, which you may or may not have heard of, where uh, <clears throat> there's a there's a study going on, um, and it's there is a timeline to to uh, for local DSS to become regional, which will be laid in the laps of the commissioners to decide that. So that's coming. It's in the process of being studied. There's a working group that's involved in that. Lastly, I guess the the it's it's already been said, but the the Maxwell Center is just a tremendous icon for Wayne County. Uh, it's something that has been uh, looked at, as men mentioned many many times, for over 20 years. 
what I want this center to be, and all of us do, is that to be able to serve the county and surrounding counties, but I think most of all that we can provide a place and market it in such a way that it is beneficial to all citizens of Wayne County. So the festivities were great, the food was good. I heard Commissioner Daughter say the food was really good uh, at our gala. Uh, I, uh, I'm not, I think it's the second time since the last governor's ball that I've been in a, that I've been in a tuck. So you um, might want to keep that picture, you might not see me again. But anyway, it was a great week and um, Wayne County is being blessed and I'm thankful to be a part of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Aycock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, been a lot going on lately, but I did attend the Highway 70 core meeting, and, and it, it was, a lot of it really doesn't pertain to Wayne County a whole lot anymore because we've already got our section of, other than on the western end, uh, completed. Uh, but there is discussion going on about it. And, but, uh, as time goes on, we can discuss uh, and, and bring you up to uh, what's going on with Highway 70. Uh, also, I'd like to mention a few things about the uh, Highway, I mean, the uh, Maxwell Center. Uh, I did manage to get out there all the days we had something going on this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and as everyone said, the galley was great, the ribbon cutting, uh, everything was, was fine. Uh, I only heard one little complaint, and that's and, and I was one of them. Uh, I, the, the, the names on the wall out there, and I understand our facilities director is already working on it, uh, but I had walked by the plaques on the wall for two days and didn't realize what they were. I mean, you can't read them. Uh, but I understand Kendall is, is addressing that. Uh, but I have heard nothing but positive comments on the on the on the Maxwell Center. Uh, I like I say I, I tried to attend something all four days. Uh, did go out a little while Sunday afternoon and listen to some of the high schools in the county, uh, their their courses and and their bands uh, perform. Well, there's some talented young people in Wayne County. But I think the highlight of the whole weekend was Sunday afternoon and Sunday night when the churches in the, in the county and in the communities come together with a youth rally. Uh, I planned just to go to start with just to see what was going on, but I stayed for the whole thing. Not only do we have some talented people, uh, young people in our, in our school as far as talent, but uh, the staff at the, at the Maxwell Center had set up uh, 750 chairs. They had the room corded off for about half and half uh, with the anticipation that they wouldn't need the second half. But they, they were thinking ahead. They had it set up. So within 30 seconds of opening those doors for those kids to come in, and uh, they were provided pizza. But within 30 seconds of opening the doors for them to go into the, to the main uh, assembly hall, uh, they had to start taking the wall down. Because they very obvious that it wasn't going to hold them. Uh, out of the 750 chairs, they might have been 100 chairs empty. So they had somewhere <coughs> in the neighborhood between six and 700 kids at that, at that youth rally. And uh, they're having another one in April. Uh, and they've assured the staff uh, that they're going to they're going to max out the max this time <coughs> next time. I mean, it was it was amazing to see those young people, uh, and 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 the way they handle themselves, uh, and and the leadership that they've got. Uh, one thing that did come up though, that uh, and, and no one knows whether that whether it was uh, oversight or whether the invitation was sent out, uh, but we want to get. We want all churches, all races, at that next youth rally. Uh, this is uh, I can I, I, the way I look at it is the, the 
those young people that with that, that rally, they're the futures of our country. And uh, <clears throat> that was the highlight of the weekend for me. Now, all the rest of it was great, but that, but Sunday night was, was it was spectacular. Oh, uh, and that's uh, about all I have, Mr. Chairman. Other than I hope I didn't offend any fire departments in my statements earlier, but I was just saying something that I felt like need to be said. And uh, you know, if I offended anyone, I apologize for it. But uh, quit spending money foolishly, and I won't. Get on you again. Thank you. Mr. Gurley. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, it's been a busy couple of weeks for all of us. I know I've had some, it seems like about every day, but I, I like to highlight a couple of events and make one comment at the end. I did have the opportunity to attend the <coughs> Livestock Development Association with a couple of you all, and um, due to another obligation, I had to leave earlier than I, I wanted to, but they had a very good attendance, but I want to make sure we congratulate Mark Hood, the incoming president of the Livestock Development Association. Mark will be taking the reins from Mr. Curtis Shiver. Mr. Curtis has been the uh, Livestock President for 30 years, and um, he's still going to stay active, but Mr. Curtis has been very devoted to that association, and he certainly deserves a lot of praise for all the efforts he's given to the association. Then uh, another one has had the privilege to attend the function at the Wayne County Extension Community Association last week with much others of you all here today. And uh, this group of ladies is so amazing. They had in their bulletin where they had contributed over 7,800 volunteer hours this year. So that and then the presentation they give us, um, I asked for a little history and got some history on it. And rather than me reading the history, I, I can't do it justice. But I'm going to ask to pass this information along to Ms. Bowden and uh, Bowden and um, Joel and ask them to reach out to Extension Community Association ladies and do a program on Channel 10 if we will. It's a remarkable story, and they are pillars of our community, and I just think they need to be recognized. And as you see in their presentations, things come full circle. Um, and to put a plug in for them, their annual fundraiser will be March 21st from 11 1 at the Maxwell Center. So I know they're looking forward to that. And then, Mr. Chairman, last comment. I want to follow up to some statements that the Commissioner made about a recent Board of Education meeting and comments that were made at that meeting. And, and the $90 million that Mr. Daughtery mentioned is amazing. It's amazing what this board has contributed to the schools here and our commitment to the education of our children. It is my specific concern and mission to support the Wayne County Board of Education as all Wayne County citizens want the absolute best for our children. However, with this mission comes a varied number of fixed costs. Tax dollars at a premium not only for the taxpayer but for the agencies that use these dollars to provide services that are critical, necessary, and desired. The indication that this Board of Commissioners has not put those tax dollars in play to continually improve not only our schools but our entire county is wrong. I challenge anyone with skepticism to research the history of this Board's funding stream for education. I'll be clear here, funding is not a silver bullet to correct all problems that arise. A measured, strategical, common-sense approach must be applied in all situations in Wayne County government, of which Wayne County Public Schools is and always has been included and considered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Gurley. Not to prolong that same discussion, but I'm going to take a stab at it myself. A week and a half ago, we had a joint board meeting with the school board and the, our board. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to make sure that we were on the same page because we've been working so well together the last few years. And, um, and there has been great investment by this board into new facilities. There has been. And I asked specifically at that, that meeting, I asked Dr. Dunsmore, and I said, well, with the extension that the General Assembly has given us, and thank God they did because it, would have, it could have created, if we did it before the General Assembly did that, it could have cost us up to seven cents on the uh, property tax going up, which nobody wants that. So they recognized that and they gave us that extension. That was the purpose of that because every county was in the same spot. 
But what disappoints me so badly is we had the opportunity to discuss these things together, and it didn't happen that way. And at first I was offended, but I was more disappointed because we don't want cyber relations with our Board of Education because we've got to work together and what you said and what you said and these ladies back here because you know if we don't work together we're not going to improve the lives of our kids so we need to be on the same page and we're not always going to agree but we've got to talk about them and we agreed in that meeting that we would have another meeting with the board of education and i still want to do that but we need to be sure that we're helping each other and working together and that's all i'm going to say about that uh, HB 6, uh, 630, if you like the regionalization of mental health, you're going to love that. If you get my drift. Um, there will be additional things going on in the Maxwell Center this week. We've got STEM programs, of STEM um, Fair. fairs. There's yep. two of them this week. So all the kids from the middle school and high school, I believe every one of them will get a chance to go through there this week. I say it. This center has been a great opportunity for, uh, for our kids to learn that food doesn't just come from food line. And um, there's just a lot, a lot of great future out there. And, and I don't disagree with what you said, Mr. Camardi. We need, need to get everybody out there, not just it needs to be more diverse. And that's, that's the whole purpose of this thing. Um, but I think that James and his staff did an outstanding job. And Noel, I know you're listening. I saw her in the emergency room on the floor. I want her back working. So that just goes to show that all staff from all departments were out there working together to get this thing open. And they are to be committed. They really are. So the plaques. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I don't want to misquote James, but I think I understood him in conversation uh, one day this week that uh, – he knew he had some that would cancel, but I think he said that that center is already booked up almost every weekend until mm -hmm. September. Now he said he knew he'd have some cancellations, but that's 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 amazing. That's mind-boggling. And he received a number more inquiries this weekend. He certainly did. And I was going to comment on the plaques. That was not what we asked for, and there's some things missing, misspellings. And we'll resolve that. And there's, there's some the things that need to be added to that. And I don't want to take, you know, steal his thunder because I know there's going to be a, um, a news release to come out. But over the weekend, and I'm not going to say the number, but there were a lot, a lot of people. And I'll, I'll save that for the, I, our media department to. I did that ask out. James if we could state the number, but it was upwards of 8,000. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to steal his so, thunder. But he, 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 <laughs> I asked him beforehand, and, and he said, sure, you, you, you can say for that. For the first so. weekend, I think that's truly outstanding. I really do. Anyway, those are my comments. And I know we need to go back into. Um, Anybody else got anything before we go back into closed session? And we need I to go back. Said quite I think you have. You've done a good job. <laughs> for, the same for the same reason before. So is a motion to go in closed session? So moved. We got a motion on the floor. Discussion. Let's go in closed session.